Hello there. My name is RJ, I am an add-on creator. And today we're gonna learn how to make custom blocks for Minecraft Bedrock. Now, I'll be doing this on an Android device. But you can follow the tutorial on PC, Mac and iOS. You just need some similar tools on your platform. A text editor to edit some basic JSON, a pixel art or a drawing app of your choice to create some textures, and Blockbench to make some low-poly 3D models. These three are the main tools we need for now. This is for Android and iOS users, how to get Blockbench on your device. Go to blockbench.net, and click on the open web app button, and it'll open Blockbench on your browser, then click on the three dot, then click on the, added to home screen button, that will install a, web app on you device. Next, look up Minecraft Bedrock Creator Documentation, it'll land you on this page. This is a really useful website given to us by the Minecraft Marketplace team. We'll be coming to this page multiple times in this series. But for now just scroll down to the very bottom where it says Tools and Vanilla Packs. Then download the Vanilla Behavior Pack and Vanilla Resource Pack from here for now. Now, we need to locate the Minecraft save files, I'll leave the directory in the description of this video for all the platforms I know of. So, for Android, open your file manager, then locate the Android folder and open it, after open the data folder and scroll down until you see the com.mojang.minecraft then open that folder until you reach in this section. Here we'll mainly, working with the development pack folders, also make sure not to mess with any other folders in here. To start with our project, open the development behavior folder, this is where we're gonna add the behaviors of our add-on, in this case the behaviors of our block. Oh. And for you guys this folder will be empty, I'm working on other projects that's why I have other folders here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a new folder for our project. You can name it anything you want, I am naming this one, tutorial pack bp. Just like this, go to the development resource folder and create a new folder for our add-ons resources, and I'm calling it tutorial pack rp. Now we have both of our project folders ready, but the game can't read our folders yet. So, before we do anything we have to make the project folders readable to the game so it'll be visible in the add-ons section of Minecraft Bedrock. So, to make our add-on visible to the game, we need to register our behavior and resource pack with the help of a simple file called manifest. The easiest way to obtaining a manifest file is to copy it from the vanilla packs that we got from Minecraft Creator Docs. So, just unzip the downloaded zip files, then open them and copy the their manifest.json file and paste it into your projects. Oh, and make sure that the resource pack manifest goes into your RP folder and behavior manifest goes into your BP folder. And I already made a pack icon or a thumbnail for our tutorial pack. So, I am just gonna apply it to both of my folders. If you want to add custom pack icon for your pack, just keep in mind that the icon name should be pack underscore icon and it needs to be a PNG file. And, Here's a visual representation of the file structure for the behavior pack and resource pack, if you had any difficulty following the early steps. Next we need to edit the manifest files, so click on manifest file, and open it with your text editor or code editor. I'm just gonna open both of our manifest in a code which is the code editor I am using in Android. And, I'll leave some links in the description so check them out you'll have everything you need there. Now we have our manifest in our editor. We need to change and customize it for our pack, if we leave the manifest just like this, the game will treat it as a duplicate pack because of the UUIDs are same as the vanilla ones. To start with I'm gonna add our pack name and description, in this case I'm just gonna replace the vanilla and add tutorial instead. After that we have the UUIDs, which is what make each pack different from one another. For now, I'm just gonna delete the ones that came with the vanilla files and we can get back to them in a sec. Next we have the version and main engine version. The version is basically states the version of the pack. By default it's 001. Since, this is the first version of our pack I'm leaving it as default. Next we have main engine version, that's the version of the game you're making the add-on for. I'm just going change it to the latest version which 1.19.60 is of now. Next I'm just gonna get rid of the second UUID, and we're gonna replace it in a sec. And I'm going to delete the second description, because we only need one of them. Just like this, we need to edit the behavior pack manifest, so I'm just gonna do that and I'll bring you back in a sec. Okay, so now we have updated the name, description and main engine versions of both of our packs, 
The only thing left is to update the UUIDs. For this look up UUIDgenerator.net and copy and paste the new UUID onto your manifest. Just like this, go back to the page and click refresh and copy a new UUIDs and paste it on the rest of the strings. With that, we are done with our behavior pack manifest. I'm just going to save it and move on to resource pack manifest. So, just like before, copy a new UUID and paste it on the second UUID string of the resource pack manifest. And the header UUID need to be same as the dependency of the behavior manifest if you're making an add-on pack. So just copy the UUID from the dependency section from the behavior manifest and paste it on the resource manifest and save all the files. Now we're done with all of that let's create a new test world in creative for our project. And enable the holiday creator features toggle for our add-on to work properly. This is because there are still some block behavior components behind experimental features. And now, go to the behavior pack section on your world creation screen in my packs, and if have followed all the steps till now, then your pack will be visible here. Here we can see our tutorial pack is visible so, I'm just gonna enable it, and you can see it'll show up in the active pack folder. Next go to resource pack and open the active pack folder, and you can see that our tutorial pack RP is already enabled. This is because of the dependency UUID being the same on both files. Now we just gotta create this world. Now, let's start work on the custom block. So open the tutorial pack BP and create a new folder named blocks. And open the blocks folder and create a JSON file for our block and give it a name. I'm gonna call mine simple block. So, the name should be simple underscore block dot JSON. The spaces are replaced with an underscore and dot JSON is the file format. Now open the simple block file with our text slash code editor. Here we can see that this is just an empty JSON file without any data. Now just like we did before with the manifest we're gonna copy a example JSON code for our block. To get the example code, go back to the creator docs, then click on the block JSON documentation and on the get started section click on the block description link, and scroll down until you see this example JSON code for a block, so, just copy this line of code from here and paste it on your JSON file. Just like we did with the manifest, we have to edit some of the things on here. First thing we gotta do is delete all the block components that are in this code, cause most of them are outdated. After that we need to change the format version, 1.19.60 cause that the version I'm on right now. Next we have is the identifier, which is what you name your block or entity, an identifier has a namespace in the name of your block, entity or items. Here we already has a small preview for identifier, design lavender stone, where design is the namespace and lavender stone is the name. So I'm just going to change design to CRJ and Lavender Stone to Simple Block. And you can change the namespace to any name you like, other than Minecraft because that's reserved for Mojang only. Now go back to Minecraft Docs, and open the Block Components list, so we can get the updated Block Components for our block. Here's the first component, Collision Box, which defines, the collision of a block. If we click on the link we can find more about the component, and also if you scroll down you can find the component in its JSON forms, so you just need to copy and paste, it your block file. Also some components can be specified as a boolean or an object, here collision can be specified as a boolean. If this component is omitted, the default value for this component is true, which will give your block the default values for its parameters, a collision box the size, shape of a regular block. Okay, so I have copied all the components we need for a simple block in Minecraft, Let's go through some of them. Collision box which is true, that means our block will be solid. Selection box is the black outline on a block, when you point at it. Map color you can define a hex value here, so when you open a map near our block that color will show up on the map. Destructible by mining an explosion, makes the block break when you mine or a TNT is exploded near it. Display name shows the name of the block when you hover over the block item in your inventory. I have not changed the display name yet. So I'm just going to change it from custom block to simple block, now when you type simple block in your inventory, our block will show up. We have one more component to add. I left this for last because did you remember I told you to enable holiday creator features, when we created our test world. That because unit cube is still under experimental features. And this component basically defines a block as a 16 by 16 cube without a block model. So just copy and paste this component just like the other ones. 
If you don't want your add-on to run under experimental features, you can use the geometry component and attach a custom model to your block, instead of unit cube, but we're not going to dulge on that today. With that, we're done with components for our block, so let's save the file and open our test world and see our block in-game. In-game, you'll not see your block inside the creative tab, because we have not told the block to appear inside the inventory tabs yet. So, to get our block, you need to use slash give command. So I'm just gonna use the give command and get my simple block. There we go, we have our block in game. Now let's make it appear in creative inventory. So it'll be more easy for us to obtain. So go back to Minecraft docs and open block description, and scroll down to menu category and click on that link, and you'll end up here. Basically this component has two parameters, category and group. Where category is the individual tabs on the inventory menu and groups are a folder inside the category which holds a group of items or blocks, for example the group of colored glass or armor. And this is how the menu category JSON component would look like if you're adding a leaf block. For our simple block I don't want it appear in a group, I just want my block to show up inside, the construction tab. Oh. And the menu category component goes inside the description section, of our JSON not in components. And there you go, now our block will show up inside the search tab and the construction tab as well. Next we need to give our block a custom texture, so open tutorial pack rp folder and create a new folder named textures. After that open textures, and add another folder named blocks, this is where we're gonna save all of our block textures. Now we're all done with that, let's make a texture for our block, so open your drawing app, put the pixel height and width at 16 and make your texture. I'm done with my texture, so I'm just gonna name it simple block.png and save it, and move the texture inside the blocks folder. After that open the vanilla resource pack, and open textures folder, copy the terrain texture.json and paste it inside, our textures folder. After that, open it with the text editor, and delete all the vanilla texture data, and rename the resource pack name to tutorial. Now let's register our texture as a data, first we need to give a name so we can access it with that name, I'm gonna keep it same as our block, so I'm naming it simple block, then we need to call our texture with the file path, so texture slash, block slash, simple block. And save this file, now when we call our texture, Minecraft will know how to navigate to that texture using this file. Now we're done with that, back out of the textures folder, and go back to the vanilla rp, and copy the block.json file, and paste it in our tutorial rp, and open it with the text editor. Now delete all the vanilla blocks, and we can call our custom block and register our texture on it. So, here give your block name. I'm gonna call my block and register the texture that we made a while ago. Here you can also specify a sound for your block, by default it will be stone, but I'm gonna change mine to wood, after save the file and open your test world. And there you go, that's how you add a simple custom block in Minecraft Bedrock. It has the custom texture we made for it and the wooden sounds. I'll leave this pack on the description of this video so you guys can download it and check the files yourself. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments. Well yeah, that's all for today. On the next one we can learn more about the advanced side of the blocks. So I'll see you on the next one, peace.